Hi, I'm Brian. Um, this is the BOF for uh, Auditor and Trademark. Um, right now, I'm the only, well, we have two um, auditor members here. Uh, Martin is here and myself. Um, is everyone familiar with the auditor team's role in Debian? So basically, you can think of like the controllers for the project, keeping track of assets, and um, both financial and uh, non-tangible uh, assets. Um, I got involved because I'm also involved in the trademark team and was tracking down domain names and trademarks and they kind of fed in to join the uh, auditor team. Um, you can read on the screen um, some of the tasks we're responsible for. And it's... Yeah, so, so one of the things, so the delegation actually was from Zach in 2010. Uh, one of the things that uh, Zach envisioned at, at this point was, uh, doesn't work. Yeah. If you're Did it work? Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things that Zach envisioned at the time was uh, public reports on a regular basis about Debian financial status. We are clearly not there yet. Uh, mm. The delegation even said that the reporting frequency we are looking for is monthly. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, basically the long-term goal would be to to be able to to have monthly reportings, which means that most of the most of the work should be uh, mostly automated. And that's clearly not what we have now. Right. So, yeah, for, so sorry, for, from my point of view, uh, I think that one thing that where well, we have quite a lot of work to do is uh, structuring communications with our, with our trusted organizations. So we have uh, four plus one trusted organizations currently. Uh, plus one is uh, Debian CH, which is not a trusted organization. Hi, Didier. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, but by 29th of August, Didier promised that uh, progress will be made uh, on that. Uh, <laughs> um, and yes, uh, there's, I think there's a lot of work to do on improving the way we talk to TOs in terms of uh, protocols. Okay, so uh, we've put together a list of what we're currently working on, um, and we, so um, the, we're re currently the Debian donations page is a little convoluted to actually get to make a donation. It involves a number of clicks. There's an open bug on that. Um, I that's on my to-do list. I, if anybody wants to help, I'm, I'd welcome help. Um, so there's this is a, a larger, the next one, if you look on line 26, rationalized Debian's approach to donations, hardware donations, partners, sponsorship. Right now it's all kind of separate things and we recognize our partners and sponsors separately within contextually. There's no kind of umbrella of this organization is backing Debian no matter how they're doing it. So we don't have that yet and I think it, it would be long term a good approach to working with third parties. Um, and that the next bullet kind of ties into that as well. It's kind of like coordinate how we talk with our sponsors, like have a more coordinated fundraising efforts. Um, so uh, another action is, and this kind of ties in with making donations easier, is working with SPI to enable donations via PayPal. Uh, there was a long discussion late last year um, with SPI members, and it was kind of agreed that if, if we follow a certain set of conditions that they'd be okay if, you know, SPI could enable PayPal donations for member organizations. Um, one of the things we wanted is a little more control over that process. So we would be having a separate bank account tied to a PayPal sub account and things like that. But um, that's going to take some work doing. Um, 
the royalty scheme, uh, could you talk about that? Yeah, so there's uh, um, an editor who published a Debian book and they are interested in uh, setting up a royalty scheme. Actually, what they, what they ask for is a mention of uh, the book on the Debian website, which we already offer to all books about Debian. And based on, well, if we do that, which is easy to do, uh, they, they agree to give a uh, no, small percentage of uh, revenue from, from the book. But that's really small percentage. So we have documents to fill about that. Uh, I don't think that's particularly urgent, but uh, still, if someone should do it at some point. The last point uh, is actually linked. Well, you can talk about cryptocurrencies. You, you, you were the one doing uh, Okay, that. so we were kind of, um, at some point, we were wondering if it would be legal to accept cryptocurrency donations or if it is legal, how to go about it. And we talked to uh, SFLC, who's our legal advisors through um, SBI. And Originally, they kind of didn't get back to us, but it looks like the laws have been clarified in the United States, at least over the past year. And they're like, yeah, go for it. No big deal. So we're kind of, I don't prioritize it as highly as like, say, PayPal or other things, but it would be nice to be able to accept uh, Bitcoin and perhaps other cryptocurrency donations. But we still have to sort out how Logistically, do we want to do it? Do we want to work with a third party payment processor? Do we want to accept the donations directly? Do we want to have a rule that as soon as they come in, they're converted into some sort of fiat, things like that? I don't want to get too caught up on this particular bullet because I think it is not going to make up a substantial amount of Debian revenue. So, but I think it's okay to look at it. You know. So, I'll go on. So actually the to-do list was split into incoming, is getting money in, outgoing, is improving our way to spend money, and then status, I think. So um, this is a, if you want to talk about these two bullets. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so Debian uses several trusted organizations to handle uh, our funds. Um, so we have different reimbursement, reimbursement procedures depending on the trusted organization. And the goal of uh, this item is to streamline all of it, document how people should uh, proceed to request reimbursements. Because it tends to, tends to work quite well, but it's a bit uh, uh, ad hoc. And sometimes there are reimbursement requests that uh, just get lost and then, well, this person needs to, to ping again after some time to, to get reimbursed. And that's not really nice, especially when it's a uh, uh, large amount of money uh, involved. All right, so... Oh yeah, the second item uh, is about... Uh, we have um, a Debian Visa card provided by SPI. Uh, it was initially created because uh, we needed to it to open an account on uh, Amazon Web Services. The problem is the way uh, the type of card it is apparently is not accepted by Amazon. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the details. Um, I think it was a f refillable card. I yeah. think that was the issue. That's something we don't have in Europe, so I'm not yeah. familiar with it. But uh, uh, so we need to probably to speak with. Uh, we should talk to SPI people okay. about it to see okay. if it's possible to get another card because uh, DSA, for example, is very interested in being able to spend money using uh, a credit card because currently DSA members uh, have to um, pay themselves and then get reimbursed. And they do that all the time. <laughs> um, so yes, we need to find s a solution, either improve on the SPI Visa card or find another solution to get uh, uh, a credit card uh, using possibly another trusted organization. If Debian CH is interested. Uh <laughs> well, we already have the PayPal account. De facto, yeah, but PayPal account, I mean. Yeah, but you cannot really pay for hardware using no. PayPal. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I just want to take a break. Does anybody have any questions about what we've gone over so far? Yeah, let's make a discussion. Yeah, well, oh. currently, when looking at the donations page, 
www.debian.org it says um, donation via software and, software and public interest and not donation via any of the trusted organizations. That's one of the issues. I yeah, but I think we should more streamline that website to show that it's not only possible to donate via SPI, but through all of the custom organize, uh, trusted organizations. That's one issue. And the other one I would like to... Have as, um, currently, the donators are not shown on the web page. Historically, there was some discussion about, well, if a student comes and bu buys... Uh, two terabyte disks, that's probably quite much for a student to pay, but it's n compared to that, it's nothing for a, a company to pay. And um, I would like to establish some certain um, donation levels so that we can make it m way more visible to, uh, to the public um, who donated how much money, because that will probably also attract quite a lot of donators big companies to donate money on uh, to the to the Debian project. Are you interested in working on that yourself? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean I mean that's a big problem with uh, everything auditor related that is not something that uh, is of interest to many Debian con contributors so clearly uh, are underpowered um, yeah. So, but if you are interested in working on that, yeah. Um, well, probably we then should just agree on some sponsorship levels and then just set it up. I, I think, um, for example, if you look at the FreeBSD Foundation webpage, it, ha it has a quite nice, good overview, uh, even down to five US dollar donations to who donated how much money. And if we, once we agreed on those sponsorship levels, we should just um, make that page. Yeah, but who who would be making that page? Who's well, I would be willing to help from, with my web team hat on. Okay. Um, yeah. Then there's a problem of uh, automatically getting informed of donations to update the page. And you don't want to do it manually for $5 donation because it means doing it uh, on a daily basis almost. Feel free to. Mm. <laughs> well, maybe we should write things down during. The yeah, but I'm standing. Okay, I can put it in. Uh, <laughs> you know Did you? Huh? You are the secretary. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep. okay, so let me just add a section at the bottom right here. Updates from DC 14. Uh, Donations page. What did I mess that up? No. Donations page. Add other TOs. Yeah. Just to give uh, an idea, of th there have been about 200 credit card donations since the beginning of 2014. So I'm re it's really about uh, daily updates. <laughs> So one of the things um, when I talked about the streamlining earlier, it is rel in related to the SPI thing where it sends you to the page that has the big list of uh, all the SPI projects. We went away where you just have a form, you f select an amount or fill an amount and click donate and it, it does it. And SPI it does work with a third party payment processor that can support it, but it's not their default one. And we also want to add like couple options for payment processors, but that can come later. Can we go back up? I don't know how to ask the other points. Oh, yeah, yeah. So were we status? Yeah. Yeah. So I can talk about that. So from my point of view, it's actually quite hard to make decisions about the use of Debian funds because we have no global overview of Debian finances, especially over time. So that's something I've been working on. I've not finished, but I have today to finish it before my talk on Thursday. So I'm confident I will <laughs> be able to present things. Uh, so I'm not really going to present results yet, but at least this is mostly, mostly done from my point of view.
it's not really about uh, strictly doing accounting of uh, what went through, but uh, at least I get I have an idea of uh, what's going on, uh, taking steps a little step back. Um, second item is we now have a list of uh, criteria for trusted organizations. Uh, four trusted organizations went through the process of answering the questions and were approved. DBNCH is missing. Uh, DDA is working on that. Um, yeah, <laughs> doesn't help. <laughs> um, Mm. Yeah. Then the well, the <laughs> <laughs> the following action item, well, related to that's not, no, I mean the um, after the TO evaluation, the next thing to work on is um, actually making sure that we have all we need in terms of uh, remote access to uh, account. For example, for FIS, we have a really nice web page to list everything going on. Uh, for SPI, we don't have that. For Debian CH, we don't know if we will get that for Debian France uh, as well. So that's really something to, to clarify. Uh, yeah, following to, uh, yeah. So just also, also, re also related to that, yeah, we need to document the list of trusted organizations. That's really, that's easy. That's just about uh, website updates, but uh, still needs to be done. That's current. It currently is documented in the wiki, but he's talking about putting it in dub 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 dub. dub, 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 dub. Yeah, something similar to the uh, Debian organization uh, page that lists all delegation. Okay, so I guess the changes of me being a member of the auditor team is relatively new. The delegation is, and me and Philip are not part of the delegation yet, so that's all that is about. Yeah, it's also about thinking about uh, what's really the role of the auditor team, because it might have evolved a bit since the original delegation. So, that's... It's not really auditors anymore. Yeah. Uh, I, it's not really auditors anymore, it's like more money managing whatever it's kind it's of not anymore an external point of view just to verify that things are which i think is what the auditor word means but maybe i'm wrong yeah. bookkeeping yeah treasury the money So who actually makes the policy decisions about what companies to accept money from, whether to use um, you know, any particular PayPal, for example, as a conduit for the money? Is that done by this group, or is it done by another group, and you're simply acting as an auditing organization? So, yeah. so, so the DPL is in charge. So myself, uh, in charge of making the policy decisions about uh, how to spend and accept money. Together with, well, I use uh, uh, the auditors as an advisory board. Um, so there are some constraints uh, coming from trusted organizations. Uh, status of the trusted organization. Not if not every TO can accept um, every kind of money, for example, well, we need to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. So I've been quite a lot of discussions in the US, which I admit I haven't followed uh, well, in deep detail, about um, uh, organiza organizations like SPI uh, risking losing their uh, non-profit status. Uh, so yeah, need to be careful about uh, these kind of things. I'll just add a point about that. We've had uh, quite heated discussions last year's StepConf uh, sponsoring of um, about the from whom we can accept money. And uh, there was one discussion about an evil tobacco company. And um, basically, I think the baseline we finally agreed upon is that money is money. So with, with one caveat, if nobody's willing to work on it and accept the money, we probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I, I think you've just answered my question. If the policy decision is money is money, then you know that's you're telling me what uh, what the rule of thumb is. But that's of some concern to me. But uh, maybe I'm in the wrong BOF. I don't know. Well, they also money can have no strings attached. So. Money always has strings attached. Other than what we offer as you know sponsorship benefits up front. You know. Any other questions? How are we dealing with um, big money donations where the donator does not want to be listed? So currently it's not a problem. In <laughs> future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think that uh, yeah, uh, donator should be should have the option of not being listed. It's quite. We had quite, uh, so digging through our credit card donations history, we had some surprising donations uh, but from people that not that I didn't know them. So, because the auditor and um, auditor's team and uh, the DPL uh, get notifications of credit card donations, so they are aware of uh, who is donating. I, I can add there has been a history of anonymous donations in the past, but not very large ones. And they typically are dealt with a case by case basis. So, trademark? So, yeah. So, basically, the, uh, that's two buffs in one. The first, so, the first half is about uh, auditor. So, if there are no other questions, we can move to trademark. Or, qu or commands or okay. All right. So I'm also on the trademark team. Um, the other two members of the trademark team are not here, um, unfortunately. But we'll um, just uh, De Debian Wordmark is a registered trademark in the United States, um, and it's also extended to international um, coverage through the Madrid Protocol in. Uh, I'm going to have to say this from memory, but uh, the e uh, basically the Europe. Can oh, you those sure. Yeah. I think Japan, China, and the UK are the other three. Yeah. Um, EU full coverage. E yeah, EU full coverage. UK. Yeah. So um, currently, our job is basically any questions about the trademark Debian itself. Uh, we field email questions. Typically, the questions are, "Hey, can I use your trademark to say Debian is cool?" You know, or something like that. Or a lot of the trademarks are covered under existing trademark policy under what is allowed. There's a section what is allowed, what isn't allowed. Um, we allow we have a fairly liberal trademark policy that allows people to make T-shirts, hats, whatever paraphernalia they want with Debian branded. Um, you can use it in you know fair use Debian is an operating system based on a Linux kernel blah 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 however um, I do not and it's pretty much good what isn't allowed if I recall the main thing that isn't allowed is you can't use Debian in your domain name and um, we are formulating uh, one of our to-do lists is to define policies for handling these domain names, we kind of have some working on some in, informal rules of thumbs of how, how to handle. Basically, if it's not allowed, you have to ask. So that's the, what the policy says. But when people ask, we're still sorting out what the answers are. Like, um, if it's Debian dot whatever, do we even allow those to be held by anybody but a trusted organization of Debian? Um, we have approved certain things like uh, Debian fan, not literally, but Debian fan club Europe.com or something like that. Um, there's some conditions that go with it. You have to agree that this is a limited license and you have to display the SPI, um, that SPI owns the trademark and things like that. Um, but if you're, if you have any further
currently uh, the oh so in a recent achievement we do have a the logo under registration domestically in the United States um, there's some further work that needs to be done there before we can um, go for Mad Madrid protocol protection but do do you understand that because it is a somewhat well-known mark we do have common law protection in most jurisdictions that recognize uh, Madrid protocol so um, right now the trademark team is an informal team reporting to the DPL it has not been delegated and that's one of the our action items um, and then this was the inbound trademark policy involved how do we deal with third-party trademarks like Mozilla and Apache and other things like that and so that is hasn't been on the trademark team's plate, but it's recently been asked if we'd look at it. So, um, any questions? So, currently looking at the Vipo website, um, it's China, European Union, UK, and Japan. But I think there are also other. Well, there are other countries, and especially in the Asian region, a region which is currently quite. A, evolving what free software is about so um, would it make sense to extend the Madrid protocol to those countries as well if possible and Let's see which countries are covered by the Madrid I, I don't know how many Asian countries are, co are covered by the Madrid protocol I mean I know Japan and China but I don't know how many others as this should have you have the white so there So the answer is perhaps. Um, <laughs> um, if I, I believe that um, you, you could come to the trademark team with a proposal for a particular country with a case that we should extend our trademark there, and we would kind of make our recommendation to the Debian project leader whether or not we felt it made sense. Um, so there's I mean, different fees associated with. I mean, there's cost benefits, that. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing uh, about domain, yeah, about domain names. Let's go back to there's also all the Debian dot something domain names. Uh, currently, we deal with them on a ad hoc basis. Uh, we don't really have rules about what to do uh, with them. Uh, basically, what we do is when we get the chance to to get back uh, debian.tld domain for major TLD uh, which we make what's necessary to get it but then the definition of major is a bit blurry and <laughs> we cannot clearly are not interested in getting all of them that would be a waste of money uh, we, it, we we were quite aggressive about uh, debian.eu uh, but the fact was that the Debian EU domain was pointing to a Microsoft hosting website um, <laughs> from a domain grabber. Um, so um, DSA at, the, at one point, um, I think, talked to Stefano, um, told him about, and he informed the um, trademark team, uh, and trademark team asked SPI to h help handling that request with, together with the Software Freedom Law Center, who then um, wrote uh, wrote several letters to the domain grabber, and in the end, we um, tried to get there the, for the EU domain. There is some sort of um, council where you can uh, bring up um, trademark issues, uh, but the fee for handling it uh, via this office was higher than just giving the amount of money the domain grabber wanted in the end. So I read that discussion and clearly we don't want to go through that process for ev every uh, minor TLD. It's just, just be crazy. Also the other related question is what to do with those domains. Currently they point to uh, the Debian website. Um, do you want to use them for local groups? 
that could make sense in some cases if the group is clearly recognized as a, a local Debian uh, representative group. For example, Debian.ch uh, is one example where the uh, TLD uh, is not uh, the domain is not owned by OTO yet. Uh, what if we? But I mean, Debian CH is going to become a trusted organization, but it could be different. What do we do about what's that? <laughs> <laughs> It's becoming kind of the running joke, but it's useful to, s to mention that Debian CH is de facto already a TO because it's acting, it's doing reimbursements in the name of Debian for some people. So uh, we will do this uh, procedure, but. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, I'll add, I'm one voice of many, but I personally believe that all Debian.star domains that we care about should be owned by TOs or held by TOs. Yeah. So, I mean, dissenting yeah. opinions welcome. And if you are owner of a Debian dot whatever TLD domain um, and want a TO to hold uh, to hold it, to speak up to the DPL or to the trademark team, and we encourage you to move your Debian dot whatever domain under SPI or FFIS or Debian France. Any other questions? I think we can wrap. Oh, I just want to add, um, m my wife, Marianne, has agreed to attend this buff, and she's been practicing US trademark uh, law for 25 years. So if you have any actual trademark questions that are beyond Debian and they're just generic law questions, She'd be happy to answer them. <laughs> okay. Thank you for attending.